Get this open here. Okay. All right. All right, take a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Okay. okay. No action items. All right, we'll go in for informational educational items. I guess that's Sally. What used to be the CAFR is now the ACFR, right? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am here to present the 2023 ACFR Annual Comprehensive Financial Report to you. We're going to open up with Sue Crosby. She's the Director of Communications, and she's responsible for all of these lovely pictures that you'll see. Sue? Yeah, I didn't take the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Sally asked me just to come and talk to you a little bit about the theme this year. Um, if you remember, last year we focused on the values from the strategic plan and it was focused a lot more on people and our staff. So this year we decided to go back to more of a um, nature and environmental theme. So basically um, we're following the journey of water from broad run effluent uh, to local streams to the Potomac and then ultimately the Chesapeake Bay. Um, and as you're flipping through the pages, you'll see these images that um, speak to how important clean water is for wildlife, recreation, um, and the economy. So you'll see kind of little maps through the book and it um, follows that journey of water. Um, and we're really happy with the way it turned out. It's beautiful. Thank you, Sue. Sure. I like that one too. Okay. Okay, so back to the beginning here. Okay, so um, the ACFR contains three sections. The first section is the introductory section, and we have this letter of transmittal, which I would like to just stop and actually read this last paragraph because this is the team effort. I don't do this. Um, so it says this report has been accomplished with the dedicated service services of the Division of Finance. We would like to express our appreciation to all employees that contributed to its preparation. We would also like to thank the board that remains committed to fiscal integrity and financial leadership. So to the finance department, thank you. To Donna Kovaliak in the back there, she's our accounting manager. This is her first year managing the process. She did an excellent job. Um, IT, HR, <laughs> Sue, there's so many that um, contribute to putting this together. So thank you all. Yeah, we couldn't do it all. without you. you. It's a big effort. This looks great. It really does. So then also in the introductory section, um, you'll see our certificate from the GFOA, Government Finance Officers Association. And we do believe and we have this review that this report is also in compliance with that for this year. Um, your lovely pictures, Board of Directors. And then we have our org chart, which I like to point out that customers is at the top of our org chart. Um, and then the Independent auditors report. This is still draft, but it is an unmodified opinion for the year. So that's important. And the final report that the board will see um, will have their final letter in it. They, they've finished their, their work. They have finished and Jennifer will be here next Thursday for the audit committee and talk about in detail what they found and how it went. And yeah. This is now the financial section. So management's discussion and analysis. And I'll just quickly go through all 108 pages for, <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> I won't. I'll just give you some highlights here. Um, assets exceeded liabilities for 2023 by 1.9 billion. Um, this is mostly our investment in capital assets. Um, net position did increase from prior year by 46.3 million. And again, it's our investment in um, capital assets that's driving that for the most part. The next page here, you'll see a little trend of our um, net position. So operating revenues increased approximately 8.6 million or 7.4% over prior year. And that's being driven um, by increasing number of accounts, our rate increase, and also usage for the year was up. Um, we did have a 1.29% incre customer increase. That's our snapshot that we take at the end of the year. Um, so that increased by 1,000-ish. Um, accounts. 
And then operating expenses there in the second portion, you'll see they also increased 3.1 million or 4%. And this was mostly driven by our contractual services for wholesale water and wastewater purchases. So total operating expenses um, went from 63.7 million to 67 million. Non-operating expenses we separate out and that's mostly our interest expense. It decreased slightly. And then we also had um, a transfer of a road this year to BDOT. So that's a little, that little new line there, um, two thirds of the way down. And then um, some other highlights for the year, we had um, customer growth. So I should, the, the notes then follow the financial section. Okay, so these are important to read. Um, Donna and I have read them all <laughs> many times. So they do provide a lot of information. I, I do encourage anyone to read them. Um, and then in the back here, we have our statistical section, which um, is fun to look at. Um, so it shows all our trends for 10 years. And um, so customer growth is higher than budgeted. We'll get into that in our next discussion on the agenda. New accounts, you can see our new account trend here. Um, customer growth on the section, second part. And then um, principal and interest, we have our debt covenant trends in here. So we actually paid 19.1 million in principal and interest in 2023. And then, um, our investment portfolio also for the year, just as a reminder, was 352 million and we yielded 3.05% in 2023. Um, so I can stop there. There's obviously a lot of pages. If anyone has specific questions, I can try to answer them, but that's just a quick run through of what is in that ECFR. <laughs> Chair, you know I'm going to have a question. Yeah. Do you want me to ask it now or? Please. Okay. <laughs> so um, thank you very much for the presentation and the, the report. Is it, is my understanding correct, this is still draft as of right now? Only because the final letter isn't okay. in there, but we have received the final letter. Okay. Um, so yeah, the next process, great question. The next process is Jennifer will come next week and talk about the specific audit. It is unmodified, so we're fine. Um, and then the board meeting in June, you'll approve it for distribution. And at that point, it's final, final, and we'll go to print with it. And then we'll file all these with our compliance agencies. We have to file our single government audit with that. Um, um, why do I always forget that? The clearinghouse. <laughs> and um, file with the GFOA also for compliance. Okay. Thank, thank you. And then one other question. In one section, and I wasn't sure if it was the letter or the the beginning intro parts where there was a um, small discussion overview of assets and liabilities. And when you look at it, there's another, yeah, that's it. Um, you can see pretty clearly um, current assets, capital assets under the asset column, and then liabilities, there's, a, there's two line items that add up, but there's also a statement like a a new line or another line, deferred inflow and outflow. What could someone explain that? Or are you able to provide an overview of yeah. what, what exactly is that? And why does that just show up in that calculation? Yeah, so great question. And oh, I wish Jennifer was here. No, I'll, <laughs> I'll do my best. It's a government accounting um, category. So, um, it's deferred, right? So it's things that aren't going to happen. Let me back up. It wasn't always the case, right? So GFOA at some point or GASB said, to make our statements more clear, we want the readers of these financials to know things that haven't happened but are going to happen in future periods. So these are things that haven't happened, happened yet, assets and liabilities that will happen in future periods. Okay. So the biggest drivers of that is our debt. As you can see, um, so that kind of breaks it out, the deferred outflows down here in this section, um, refunding debt, and then we have our pension OPEB liabilities. And similarly for inflow, there's a breakdown. Okay, and so you can do the math and figure out those two things, but the, I guess the question is the relationship to assets and liabilities as a as a overarching statement, and that's the way it's 
shows up in the report. And um, and I I think I understand what you're saying. You're saying these uh, issues or items will be experienced in the next few years. Therefore, you should take them into into account. Um, and I guess the question then is the timing. And so right there, let's say on the right side, you have deferred inflow of revenues mm -hmm. or outflows. Yep. OK, so. Those will all happen next year. OK, yeah, so so we adjust the. This is called a balance sheet and no. okay. public account, I, in other type of businesses. So this is balances that. That are all encompassing. We never close these accounts, okay. right? So these are just adjustments so that you can see total assets, total liabilities, and then those two categories will happen next year. Yeah. Thank you. And they'll hit the other statement, the net position statement. Did I do an okay job with that? <laughs> I think I got it. So pretty good. Thank you. I may be help on that too. It's really an accounting rather than a legal definition, but as I understand it, it's definitional. So um, it, it's it's an asset or liability that because of timing doesn't meet the current accounting definition of asset or liability, but is anticipated to in the near future. So it's something that will mature into an asset or a liability in the future, but doesn't meet the legal and accounting definition as of the day of the report. I think that's a good job too. Yeah. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. And that's a Gasby kind of nuance. Government accounting. Yeah. 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 Thank you. As far as Gasby, you know, a couple of years ago, the pronouncement where we took operating leases and turned them to capital leases, that's all been completed. Yeah. Well, they're constantly coming up with new things. So here we have our note on uh, new accounting pronouncements. There is a note actually here. It, yeah. um, if you all want to read that and memorize that for the deferred inflows <laughs> and outflows section. But then down here, these are our new accounting pronouncements that we adopted. And then these are the upcoming ones. So next year, and I think Jennifer will talk about this next week a little bit. So we have these accounting changes. They're going to want us to footnote significant changes, compensated absences. We don't think that's going to affect us very much, but they want to make sure everyone's recording the compensated absences the same um, and then risk disclosures. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I just have a question about the org chart. Um, so nicely laid out in here. I guess the question is for Brian. Have you? Is this different than before you came on? And if so, could you explain it just yeah, a little bit this, so we? This understand? was actually since this was for 2023. This reflects the org chart at 2023. Okay. So. Uh, the DGM of administration is Mark Peterson and the DGM of operations and maintenance and engineering is Al Nichols. And then uh, Sally, director of finance, reports to me. Okay. Uh, Tom Chunta, executive director of uh, employee services and risk and safety, reports to me. And Mike Beardsley, executive director of IT, reports to me. So kind of the finance and IT and HR are also reporting to okay. the GM currently, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. It. Sure. Mr. Allen has a question. Yes, thank you. Um, on the uh, statement of net position for the OPEB trust fund, I see the assets that are that are held. Who's making um, those investment decisions? So that is a trust fund um, that we participate in for the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia, and they, the trust has a financial uh, service that they use um, to make investments. And I do not recall off the top of my head who they are using currently as their okay. investment. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I assume the single audit has been completed as well. That's all been done and yep. will be filed. Everything's done. We've closed 2023. It's always an exciting day when we close 2023. So everything turned out fine. Um, two minor points, but Jennifer will talk about those next week at the audit committee. So, yeah. Okay. 
So it's very well done. I'm sure it helps the rating of agencies as well. We send it to that, them. That's that, part of our compliance yeah. after it's approved. Do any of our customers ask for this? Do they ever, or do they ever get a it's, copy of this? Or? It's on our website and some take a peek every now and again, but I don't recall um, anyone ever coming in and asking for a printed copy. <laughs> How about the Board of Supervisors? Do we send them a copy? We share that it's available on our website. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. Any other questions? Okay, we don't have to vote, so it's an informational item, so we'll, I guess we'll take it to the uh, go to the audit committee next week and then uh, off to the to the board, assuming that goes well. Okay. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Thank you. Your C's. Ready? Yep. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, so the item for discussion today is um, how we budget for ERC, the equivalent residential connections. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about how the process is done currently. Uh, and then staff has identified some improvements um, that we think will help the committee uh, understand more of what's happening currently. And so we're going to add some information to the financial summary report, which you'll see from Sally after this. Uh, and then also some improvements we think we can make to our budgeting and forecasting going forward. And so uh, this is meant to be a discussion. So please you know, ask questions and stop us along the way. So just high level what we do currently uh, for long range forecasting, we're using the Loudoun County growth projections um, for annual budget forecasting. We're also using Loudoun County growth projections, and then we take a look at what we're tracking through the land development process and see if it's reasonable. And if it is, then we stick with the Loudoun County forecast. Um, question, sure. Because I think I think you brought this up last time mm -hmm. looking at the trends or maybe it was Jack. You know how how good have we been at estimating ERCs yep. and so forth? I should have asked this last time. I didn't think of it until later. But how good is the account Loudoun County growth projection? I have a slide in the bullpen that we can pull up, okay. and I'll show you. Good. It's it's been, I will say, in the past, prior to five to six years ago, we've been uh, well above what the forecast was. But you'll see, we went back about five years, and it's been very very close yeah, that spike more recently there, yeah a while so yeah a couple of years okay. yeah so i'll pull that up at at the end but okay, thanks and then um at mid-year we look at where we are at the end of june and then look to see what projects we're tracking through the end of the year and then if we need to adjust either upwardly or downwardly we bring that to you in august so I, this slide is busy and i apologize but we just wanted to kind of throw everything out there that we're using and you can see the the top is really different projection tools that we have at our disposal um, and just noting you know that the further out you go from year one the more uncertainty there are with projections and then the financial tools that we're using and how frequently we update those to help mitigate you know the outer year uncertainty and so that's why we do the operating budget every year and the capital spending plan every year and update that five-year plan of finance every year so that when things change uh we're hopefully doing that you know on a regular basis to keep up with to keep up with that so this is where we wanted to talk about some improvements that we want to introduce and also hear from you to see if this is helpful or if there's something else that you would like us to add um, so going forward we're going to break out the ERCs a little more from just total and then in the, your chart it was data center and residential and commercial and so we're going to add dollar value we're going to add um, historical patterns so you can see kind of what the trends have been over the years um, and so kind of that's on the next chart so you can see back to 20 we went back to 2015 and the dark blue at the bottom is the percentage of data center connections that we've had and so it's kind of fluctuated a little bit but you can definitely see uh, it's been as high as almost 60 percent um, in the past few years uh, so you know adding that going forward so you can kind of see how we're trending and then the chart on the right is the breakdown of dollar value that we've received from ERC. So instead of just seeing that we've received 200 you know, commercial connections, you can see what that equates to dollar value. Um, and that is specific for this year. And so as you can see this year, 
uh, it's mostly <laughs> data center to this point. So another area we think we can improve, and we've heard from the committee in the past, is more sensitivity analysis related to um, ERC growth, revenue growth related to availability charges. And so that is why now you see in your five-year plan this chart, this slide, where it talks about um, what your balances look like if we didn't have any data center connections. And so we thought we could do a couple more. We need to talk with Davenport. Maybe they have some ideas as well. Uh, you know, what our growth projections look like versus the county growth projections, even do a really low growth scenario, see what that looks like. If there's others that you would like us to do as well, we can certainly work with Davenport. Um, but just trying to show you different sensitivity analysis and what the impacts are on your cash balances and debt service um, going forward. And then as far as annual budget and near-term forecast, um, we we talked with some of our peer utilities. We talked with Fairfax Water. We talked with Prince William, um, and we talked with some consultants to see if there are ways that we can improve how we do this. And we did get some feedback that those organizations are focusing more on the projects that they're tracking in the near term, as opposed to just what the county projections are. Um, and so we got some good ideas from them on how they do that. And so we would like to incorporate that into our process going forward. Um, we think that'll help us just rely on our forecast more instead of just taking the county numbers and seeing whether they're reasonable or not. So our assumption is this will lead to more conservative numbers going forward than compared to the current county projections, um, which is not a bad thing, but I just think that's we just think that's what's going to uh, happen going forward. So we want to introduce that for this budget cycle that'll be coming up in the next few months and then kind of compare that going forward and make adjustments as we need to to see how we're we're trending. So that was the discussion. Uh, Mr. Kelly, here's your slide that you wanted to see. So we went back to 2015. Um, as you can see, there are a couple years where we were slightly under the forecast and a couple years where we were slightly over uh, forecast. But I think the, what was it, Sally? Like 30% was the average um, for the 10 year period. Um, Chair, thank you for um, having this on the agenda for today, and thank you to Brian and the mm -hmm. staff for bringing it forward. I think it's helpful. I did. I was the one who asked for it, so I'll take responsibility <laughs> right now. I apologize <laughs> for that. Um, <laughs> my concern was um, listening to all the other financial presentations and um, seeing where there's pressure on either the rate study or rate mm -hmm. rate studies that occur on a regular basis. You had three years up every mm -hmm. three years. Um, and our capital improvement program, what we need to plan for for the system mm -hmm. and then for growth of the system. Um, and so I just felt that there was probably um, a discussion needed so that we are forecasting as best as we act as we possibly can. Can you go back to the the first slide? Sure. In your in the beginning of this presentation, there's a really good slide. So this one? Um, no, the one oh, before sorry. that. On how Loudon Water looks at this. Mm -hmm. And so in in raising questions or concerns to look at look a little bit deeper, there's really nothing wrong with that current process because the process to estimate growth and to understand it, you have to have a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And this was very, very sound. But the underpinning of reliance on the growth forecast that comes from the county, that's where I think mm -hmm. I think we have concerns. And so um, last meeting, last board meeting, um, my colleague, Mr. Buffington, and I had a chance to just catch up and I had pulled out the um, growth summary from 2020 that comes from the county. Mm -hmm. And so I I recently just I spoke to the um, vice chair of the fiscal impact committee and um, he confirmed that this um, projection is done every four years. They're working on the updates mm -hmm. right now. But in the 2020 time period for um, non-residential development, 
the projection was, and th these are for the years 2021 out to 2045. So very long horizon. And um, the reason for that long horizon is somewhat related to the current um, comp plan that mm -hmm. had projections out through 2040. But what was remarkable, um, 8.4 million square feet of office, 4.3 million square feet of industrial, 17.8 million square feet of data center, 3.1 million square feet of retail, 10.9 million square feet of other, and category other, not quite sure what it would be. Um, and totaling 44 million, 44.6 million square feet of non-residential development. And so I think the spike we saw in, in the chart mm -hmm. probably was data center square footage because it's been remarkable in the community over that time period. But when you look at all these other categories, um, office doesn't seem to be really a compelling market um, driver right now. Mm -hmm. Data centers, the, the, you know, the, the ability to gain approval of new square footage and find locations for it and find whether or not the board would be the board of supervisors would approve it they seem to be headed in the other direction mm -hmm. um and then retail other other industrial those just seem to be too too high um on the residential side um unless there's significant replanning for multifamily which i think there's an interest in mm -hmm. doing now there is a our policy boundaries that are that are somewhat coterminous with our service boundaries are are a, are a limit to that new development. So so that reality, I think we needed to accept mm -hmm. and continue to work on it. But I think it's a great discussion mm -hmm. and I think your suggestions for the future are valid okay. and I would be very supportive of okay. those changes. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yeah, I would echo uh, those comments. Thank you so much for the work you all put into this. Clearly, <clears throat> a lot of work has gone into this, and it, I think it's going to improve our process. And I think it was already pretty darn good because this is a hard thing to track and budget for and project. Um, the slide, page three, is very impressive. Um, and I really, really like the slide on page five and how you've broken down the not only the percentages of each of the types um, of ERCs, but also the the what that relates to in actual dollars. So I love seeing that chart right there. Thank you. Yeah, just wanted to say that. So look forward to supporting this and more discussion at the, the full board meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Very helpful. I think I've asked this before. Um, with commercial, whatever category it is, whatever asset class it is, we do we we go back for a new connection. We go back a few years later and see if that we track. We went through a lengthy. This has been several years now, but yeah. we did go through a lengthy process where we went back to connections that we're using more, mm -hmm. um, and we got most of those done. Um, we do still look at that, but most of that work was was completed. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. See, see, sometimes you come across situations. Mm -hmm. here. The first thing we do is try to it. work with them yeah. and, you know, educate them that they're using, you know, more and than they purchased. And yeah. so can you adjust and go, you know, is there a reason why and try to educate them first before immediately just, you know, requesting that they pay more money. Yeah. Another question on uh, asset class residential. Is there a difference between townhouses and single family? Not, no, no. Okay. Multifamily is Multi separate. Multifamily, sure. But, but yeah, but no. not townhouses mm -hmm. versus single family. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Allen has a question. Thank you, Jewel. Uh, on the, I'm trying to see what page it is, on the charts where you have the projected cash flow balance as well as the projected debt service coverage, that's the impact of data centers on availability charges. I assume the debt service coverage includes the issuance that we're contemplating in the five year plan, plan of finance. Yes, that one, the, the chart you're looking at would include that. Yes. Okay. 
yeah, that, that was my only question. And just to echo what uh, the other director said, this is, uh, this is great and um, this is helpful for us. So I'm excited about it. And I just wanted to thank, thank staff and Brian for, for doing this. That's all I have. No, it's very well done. It's it's very very helpful. I think the, the um, improvements that you're planning would be a great help in just giving us a clearer picture of what's what's going on and what's uh, what's driving uh, revenues and so forth and what could impact you know, revenues potentially to have a, have a downturn. Um, you know, obviously it's just not a question of you know I was thinking of this last night. It's not a question of just going out laying pipes. <laughs> there are other capital um, projects that need, you know, that, that come along with this. Mm -hmm. is, is there a way to so many, uh, I don't know, linear feet of pipe, then I need to have this or that or the other thing. Is there, are there other things that you can show that, that go with that? Pumping stations, um, you know, water towers, um, you know, is, yeah, is something I mean, that, I think as you, we, as you go through this, is you know, you know, what I'm talking about. I, that, yeah, we you know? in the past we've done um, presentations on how we master plan, yeah, and is yeah. I think is that what you're kind of driving at, yeah, like how yeah. we master plan and what facilities we need, and um, if if the board in, is interested, we can um, spin up another presentation yeah, on that. It's been helpful. quite a few years since we've kind of done one of those, so yeah. going to the transition zone and mm -hmm. what is that. What does that involve and so forth? What are the elements that, that come with that mm -hmm. um, as far as impacting uh, capital? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That, that might, would that be helpful? Yeah. Okay. All right. That would be, I think we'd do that sometime. Okay. That's all I had for questions. Other directors, any questions? Terry, you good? You have any questions? Yeah, I'm great. I mean, I have a question on Sally's presentation, but that could wait. Do we plan to bring this to the board? Uh, typically, we would not. If okay. you would like us to present this item to the board, we certainly uh, can do that. A good idea to sure. do that. Yeah, I think it'd be helpful. Mm -hmm. I think they'd like to see the improvements. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're done. That was that was that was, that was great. To the beginning here. Okay. I think that's um brings us to the finance monthly summary. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. This is our last month of draft financials. So we did close 2023, so we were able to book depreciation. So next month you'll see actuals um, as of May. But as of April. Operating revenues total 38 million, which was 1 million above the forecast. Non operating revenues um, total 31.7 million, and that's 14.3 million above the forecast. Expenses again, depreciation is an estimate, so that's the one that's showing over currently, but that's strictly a mathematical formula. Um, but in total, expenses for April were 53.4 million, which was 1.3 million below the below the forecast. Um, ERCs on the next page that will show you the trend. We were at 1623, and then super excited about the next page. This has like been years since I got to add new charts in here, so this is fun. This is what you'll see every month. Um, and I like it too. So that will show you your percentage of data centers as we move along and the impact of those monthly. And then as of April, your capital spending plan, we have spent 27.3 million and we were projected to spend 30 million. So we're at 90% as of April. And then um, the CIP broken out in availability. So for the month of April, user rates funded 4 million of the expenditures and availability fees funded the remaining 6.9 million. And that's it. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Terry, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the ERCs for this year, I see we have two big months, 558 in February, 
771 in April. And those are, when you look at the last four years, those are like top five, both of those months. So is that just big data centers coming online? Can you give us a little bit of color on those two months? What happened? That's exactly what happened. Yeah, two big data centers came online. Um, it, it wasn't actually in project, projection. It was an expansion of the system is the way I understand it. Okay. And then on the pie chart, I'm assuming that's just for the first five months of the year, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. That's 17 and million. That's a that's a pretty pretty big number already. And we're only in May. So Yep, and that was directly impacted by those data center okay. expansions last All month. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I think that's visually, I think that's really helpful, especially with the rating agencies. Because they can point to you're depend you're dependent on data centers, you know, you're dependent just like they did before uh, operating revenues, you know, uh, were greater than ERC connections because their their criticism, at least Moody's criticism, was that your reliance on connections is is too high, so they couldn't give us AAA until mm -hmm. that that flipped and you had operating revenues coming in that were mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and that's why your policy that you adopted in 2018 with one times without availability charges yeah. was really uh, an important decision that the board yeah. made. Yep. They were the last and agency. Then AAA. Yeah, one other three. comment I have, um, if you look at the above the buy chart, um, that graph, you can see that the single family is, it looks like it's pretty consistently declining. Mm -hmm. So um, it's reasonable to assume that our data center portion even though 63, you might say that's high, but given the fact that we're losing single family, that ratio is probably gonna stay high. So that might be perceived as a negative by the rating agencies, because yeah. if they're worried about our reliance, it doesn't look like that's gonna improve. Um, so that's something we need to keep an eye on. Uh, Mr. Allen, I, I will add, you know, going back to the previous presentation and um, some of the trends that we are tracking, um, the one chart that was rather busy, um, we are keeping a close eye on residential applications that particular rezonings that have happened mm -hmm. in, in recent um, years and, and um, watching that really closely. So to your point, we'll keep an eye on that ratio. All right, any other questions? The end, the end of the agenda. All right, motion to adjourn. Second. Favor? Aye. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you.